this is Cherie with Soliloquies and I wanted to share my process for the bird illustrations that I'm working on. So first I have, um, this is 100% quilting cotton. It's a piece of um, cotton fabric that I have cut and pressed. And then I have sketched the outline of the bird um, directly onto the fabric using this Pentel gel roller for fabric. So the real key to this artwork are the Derwent Inktense um, pencils. So here I have a tin of 36 and these Inktense pencils are ink based so what happens is they can be used just like watercolor pencils and then when I draw on the fabric um, I can use water or a textile medium to blend them. I've been doing water first and then finishing out with the textile medium um, and those work really well. There's also an Inktense block that's available so here I have a set of 12 ink tense blocks um, which just gives more coverage area. Um, I have noticed that these rub off on my fingers really easily and if I don't wash them off then I can kind of spread it to other areas and then when that gets wet on my fabric it becomes a permanent part of the design. So I've got to be really careful with these. Um, and that's really what's key to this is that any ink tents that goes on the fabric um, and then is then wet with water or aloe vera gel or a textile medium, that becomes permanent. I do heat set and I heat set pretty regularly until I've finished, um, but it will be permanent because it's ink, it will, it will set into the fabric and it will become permanent. So I'm also using water and I'm just using water in cups with some small paint brushes. Um, I also have this water brush which you fill the tube with water and then you can kind of squeeze a little bit out to get it onto the nib and then use that um, to easily blend using the water. Uh, and then I heat set every time I change something on the artwork. And then I'm finishing with this textile medium. So this is a Tulip brand that I got at Hobby Lobby. I have used other brands. Um, I think textile mediums are all pretty much the same. They function to make um, the medium permanent into the fabric. Uh, I use it frequently with acrylic, but it also works very well with the ink tents. It does create a little bit of a shine um, on top of the um, pencils, so I don't know if other textile mediums are available in more of a matte finish, but this one is a little bit glossy at the end. So for this bluebird, I have already swatched some blues, so I have five um, blues in this set, and what I did is I just took um, a little scribble of each and then uh, blended it with water and then heat set it to dry it. And that kind of shows me the blues that I am working with and that way I can really choose the right blue for when I do um, the bluebird. I've also uh, picked out some tans and a white um, and a brown and this is just for the bird itself. I'll use other colors for the branch that bluebird is sitting on. So to get started um, I'm going to start working on the light areas first and the bluebird has some white patches um, in the back and then on the, under its belly and then on top of the beak. There's also a little bit of light blue up here and um, I'd like to add a little bit of white right under its wing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with um, the white and even though I can't really see it, I'm going to use the white to kind of blend in um, that area. And it's sort of like a mask, but it's not. Um, 
So what I'm doing is just adding white to the area that I definitely want to keep white. And what's going to happen when I actually go try to um, lay down some color there, and as I will start to see um, the difference between regular color and the color on top of the white, and I'll go, hey, I want that area white. Or the color will easily blend into that white um, and make a really nice kind of watercolory look. I want to start bringing in some areas of light tan, like on the bird's chin, um, kind of the top of the belly, and I think I want a little more white, like I want a white patch right on its breast, and then kind of bring in some tan around that. And I'm doing this really, really lightly because the thing with these um, ink tense pencils is that you can always add layers. So that's a bit of a secret um, technique is that you can always go back in and darken and add layers and heat set and then darken and then add layers and heat set. You can do that process over and over again. All right, so what I've got here is I've got white patches and then I have um, the tan, the really light tan. So now here's where the magic happens. So I've got um, brushes and I've got a little cup of water. So I'm, I want to make sure that I don't use too much water and I want to make sure I don't bleed it outside of my line. So I can use a paper towel to blot the water and be very careful. And then I'm just going to go over that um, colored pencil area with a wet brush. And this is just water. And then that will start to kind of blend out. So I'm going to blend around the white patch on the breast and I'm going to kind of blend down into the white of the belly and up into the chin. So far all I've done is just the tan color um, with that white using as the masking. Now this bird's going to end up having probably 10 different colors um, used in pencils to try to create what I'm going for. Alright, so now that I have that tan, um, kind of yellowish tan, I'm going to heat set that. So I'm going to just take it over to my pressing board and I'm going to run an iron over it, dry the ink, and then I can move on to the next one. Okay, so I used my iron to heat set that first layer. Um, this is just the first light layer, so I need to start developing more layers on top. Um, I used a tan. And I actually pressed really lightly with that tan. So even with the same pencil, um, what you can do is you can go in and press harder like you would with a colored pencil where you add it, want to add more color um, or intensity. And you can press a little bit harder to get more of an intense hue. So this is still the tan color. I haven't moved to another color yet. Um, Bluebird has some kind of orangish coloring um, on the belly, so I will try to add some orange, but right now it's just this like tannish yellow. And I'm really just kind of scribbling that color in right now. But I'm being thoughtful about where I place the color, so you know, I'm, I've got. Um, the shading so that it comes around underneath the, the chin and the neck, um, darkness kind of underneath the beak and the chin, and then around the edges. So, you know, it does require a little bit of art skill because you do need to be thoughtful about the value placement and um, be conscientious of where the darks and the lights and the mediums are going. So again, I'm just going back in with the water. This is just water at this point. And blending out the darker tans that I just added. 
And what's nice is I can kind of use the brush to um, add some texture. So, for example, these guys have little feathers that go kind of swoop down underneath the chin. So I can use the brush to kind of texture that out. Um, and I added a little bit too much in that spot, so I'm literally just using my finger to lift up some of that color. You could use a paper towel, you could use a Q-tip, but, you know, I've got what I have. Um, so, again, it's just layer after layer of blending. So I'm going to pause and heat set that. So I have um, the two kind of sh values of the tan um, sketched in and I'm going to move to kind of a more reddish um, color which is it's called mustard but it's got a little bit more of an orangish color to it. At this point I don't think I want to actually bring orange orange in. I want to try to get some of the orangey color um, laid in from the mustard color and there's a lot of really like dark orange that goes through um, the bluebird's body here. So I have a tangerine color. So I'm going to kind of overlay some of that tangerine and I'm hoping that gives me more of the orangey ready color that I need for this guy. Sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error to get the color swatching helps. Um, swatching mixes, like swatching blends helps. Um, but sometimes I just kind of go for it and I don't swatch everything that I'm working on. And sometimes that doesn't work out for me. So, um, I think that orange base is, is working. I'm actually going to go in again with the tan on top of that. So I would pull that over to my iron and just kind of um, set that with my iron. Um, I do have an ironing pressing board that I'm using. Um, so I'm just pulling it off and put, taking it over to my ironing board. Okay, so I have um, kind of the underbelly of my bluebird um, kind of colored in. And the beauty of this is you can always go back and do more. Um, I did cover up some of my white here, so I'm going to try to go back and highlight um, with the white a little bit. You can see that it doesn't really do too much. Um, it does lighten it up a little bit. But really, once you kind of cover it with any color, that's that color. So, now the fun begins. I'm going to start adding some blue. And this fella has blue on his head. He's got a bright blue wing with some black on the tips. And then um, blue tail feathers. So, uh, going to my swatch. Um, I think I'm going to start with this blue and then kind of add in a little bit of the darker blue to add the shadows. And then if I need to um, darken up, especially around the black areas, before I, before I add black, I'm going to use this dark, dark blue. So I'm going to start with 0900 and 1000. So all of these pencils have um, names but they also have numbers. And then I'm just gonna go in and shade blue into the top of the bluebird's head. And I'm not gonna go near the eye. Um, I'm gonna go back in with my pen and make that dark eye later. So I'm not gonna do that right now and using some water blend that blue 
into that white area to try to get that um, kind of watercolory light blue look and then I'm going to just blend out the rest of that blue. This blue is not dark enough so I can tell right away that what I'm going to have to do is go in with some more blue and maybe that next shade of darker blue. So with these pencils you can do dry and then add water or you can start wet and um, add color on top of wet. And that really shows the intensity of what these um, pencils are capable of. So um, I don't want to color the whole area this intense blue. Um, I do want to kind of make sure that that gets blended back out because I want that light area on the top of the head and then down into the darker blue. But that really popped out as an amazing bright blue. And before I heat set that, what I can do is go into um, the area around the eye with that darker blue that I wanted to use. So this was the I think it was the 1000 that I had swatched. So, yep. So I'm going to kind of go right around the eye a little bit and just add that darker blue around the eye. Just kind of outlining around the eye itself um, to accentuate the shadows of that eye socket. And then take the paintbrush and blend that in. So um, right now I'm using some charcoal gray to make like a light gray on top of the feet and the legs. Um, I'm going to use the tan on those legs to add another little color dimension. And um, the claws do have a little bit of a reddish tint. What is happening is I'm laying down color but I'm kind of guessing. Like, I don't know what that's gonna look like. Um, so it's really kind of just going for it and being brave and saying, yeah, I think if I use those color combinations, they will come out. Um, and it's not as obvious. Um, with the ink tents, what's it, what it's going to look like when you go in and blend it with the water. Um, but I think this is working. I think this is working out for me. So that was a combination of three colors. That was the tan, um, chili red, and I think I used a charcoal gray. So this is uh, called Bark. It is a dark brown. And um, I actually need to sharpen this. So this is a good opportunity to show um, how to sharpen. 
So I'm using a um, handheld pencil sharpener. I have found that when I use like an electric pencil sharpener with any kind of colored pencil, that electric pencil sharpener gets destroyed. So I prefer to use a um, handheld pencil sharpener for anything colored pencil related. So now my um, tip is a little bit sharper and I can get some more fine lines in there. So on these um, feet, bluebirds have kind of big feet, don't they? Well, this guy does anyway. Um, on the feet, I want to keep um, like one area light and the other area kind of shadowed. So my light source, again, is kind of like top and back. So the light is coming kind of from his backside. So I'm going to do the shadow more towards the front and keep that light um, in the back. And then once I start to get down um, kind of underneath his body, the body's gonna shade his feet a little bit. So I can go ahead and um, add some shadow. All right, so I think I'm happy with the um, bluebird's claws, and I'm going to heat set that. And then the last part of this guy is going to be the branch that he's sitting on. So we have a um, kind of a big branch with a little offshoot branch there. And my husband and I were talking, I'm not really sure what kind of um, tree a bluebird would land on, but we were thinking maybe like an oak branch. Um, so I'm going to use some gray, um, charcoal gray, to try to get um, like a really, really light gray, and then go in and kind of make a little bit of bark texture. So... Um, I am using the charcoal gray pencil for this, even though this is kind of a big chunk of area. I've tried the, what looks like charcoal gray in the um, blocks, and it is more kind of a bluish than um, I want. This is more of a cool gray. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna lay my pencil kind of um, on its side instead of going up and down with the point. So um, I can really get a nice swatch of gray covering that branch. And very lightly, again, with colored pencils, you can make um, something light in value or you can make something dark in value just with pressure, just with the pressure that you use to apply the colored pencil. And this is true in traditional artwork too. Like if I was doing this on a piece of paper, I would want to put down the light color first and then build up that color um, so that it becomes darker. So right there, my it's um, touching the edge of the paper and it started to create like an embossed line. I don't want that. Um, so I moved that over and then I've got my branch all filled in with my very, very light color of um, charcoal gray. So now I'm going to use the paintbrush, and I think I need a bigger paintbrush. So I'm using a larger brush and really um, blending out that gray. And I think I'm gonna use a bark, which is kind of a brown color. And um, so I'm gonna use the gray and the brown and try to create a little bit of texturing and um, kind of dimension to this tree branch. So yeah, I mean, my bird's done, but having a little tree branch for that bird to sit on um, and making sure that there's some um, details that gives um, context 
like this little branch that I'm working on, is also important to the artwork. All right, so my branch is almost done, and what I want to do is get the um, the charcoal gray and really kind of make a little bit of a texture, um, like a bark texture. So I'm going to go in and kind of just scribble. It's a technical word, scribble. I'm going I'm to scribble, scribble, scribble. Make little lines in a weird, random way. And then kind of add those little scribbles. What am I doing? What is going on here? Is this even in, fit in the camera view? So I made some little scribbles. Scribble, scribble. And I'm going to blend that out in a little scribbly blend. Scribbly blend. So I'm actually scribbling with the brush itself. to kind of give a more barky texture to that branch. Add a little bit more. So yeah, this is kind of light here, and I like that it's light right underneath um, where his feet land. I am going to put a little bit of shading right around the claws because I think that there should be some shadow directly underneath him. Um, he would definitely make uh, some shadow with his claws. But I do like the fact that it's kind of light through here. Um, it does add a nice contrast and kind of gives that um, bluebird a little chance to pop out. I do use the textile medium once I'm done with the artwork and brush the textile medium over the areas that I have painted with the Inktense pencils and then using uh, fabric to protect the surface, I will heat set the entire artwork. If you're watching, create this on fabric. Make sure to like and subscribe.